Mike DeValvo, and I'm here to do uh, some instruction on how to sketch. I'm with Southgate uh, Senior Center out of Woodstock, and this is lesson three. Okay, in lesson four, planning ahead, I'd like to do this. But before we begin to do this, working at the trees and the rocks and getting the distance ideas through there and all the complexities of that, it looks like it's difficult. It's not really. What we're going to do is a few things first. Okay, to get ourselves ready. First thing we're going to work with is we're just going to look at what happens when we do certain movements with a pencil. Okay, so the pencil, if your lines are this way, it affects the direction of what you're looking at. Okay, this is hatching what I'm doing. Okay, if I get the same rectangle or cube rather or whatever, rectangular cube and I go this way, trying to get these hatchings level, it gives a different motion to the structure that you're creating. If you were doing water on a river and you went down like that, then you'd have to do a waterfall, okay? Now, this time I can go this way, and it gets the motion going in the direction that you're pointing. Okay, so this gets this motion that way, this motion in that direction, and this one here, I'm just going to do a cross like that. And this one here, I'm going to go like this. Okay, so you see the differences in the movements that are going on. Now, if that were the part of a building, and you had maybe a little bit of sun coming from there, and this would be lightly shaded. And as you move across, when you get to this other side, it should be darker, okay? And then this is lighter as you go over there. I'm gonna go like this at the top and bottom because I don't wanna scribble outside the lines. But that, instead of just being just one color on the whole thing, it's darker over here and lighter over there. This one here, You'd probably be darker at the bottom, and lighter at the top, okay, depending on whether you've got reflected light or not. If it was reflected light, there was light coming from this direction, hits here, bounces on there, that would create some light stuff there, okay. This one here, a little different. We'll just do that down here, and we'll shade it. Like that. And I'm going to give it a little shot of this, a little shot of that. And I have this little eraser here. Just going to make that a little bit neater. Okay. And make this one a little bit neater. And there we go. All right. Kind of important that these things are nice and neat. And I'm going to do this one here. Same way. I'm going to make it dark here, lighter over there. Depending on the light of the day, you, you can change the direction of these. But when you do the, the wall of a house, a barn, or whatever, it's a good idea to have it maybe dark on one side and lighter the other side, like that, okay? Okay, all right, and the top here, I'm gonna get a nice straight hard line here, there, and there also, so I can see the top, okay? You can cross hatch that like this. It's harder to do for me up here where I've got it. I would usually do it flat on the plane that I'm on here. Okay, and likewise here. What you can do here is do if you can do it darker on this side, lighter on this side. What you really have to work with is your darks and your lights. Okay. Get it darker, you press it a little harder. Alrighty. So the direction matters, and this, this will create motion for you. The 
the bottom of the silo would be down, the top of the silo would be up, like that. Okay? Now, you can color this two ways. You can try to go around the silo, which is to me clumsy with a pencil, paintbrush not so much. But I, I would go straight up and down like that. Now, this area in here, a little bit lighter. I'm going over here for now. Make that a little bit darker. What you can do here too, is you can never take that off, just like that. Okay? Yeah, that's not so bad. And if you want to stay in the center of the silo, then you do this. Now, the tops, like that, and eventually, when you get to about eye level, they'll level out, and then they'll go underneath, like so. And I'm trying to get it to turn. And they'll go around the corner, around the corner. And this here will go around the corner. Okay. All right. That's not so bad. Now, the circle. If you can get a circle. Okay. Usually... We'll say that that's the color of the paper in there. Then you get your part here that you don't really color. And I'm going to do that. And as you get over here, it gets a little bit darker. Now, you have to move your pencil with the shape of whatever the object is that you're dealing with, okay? Here I moved with that shape. Here I'm going down that way. Changes direction. It'll change uh, the motion that you're dealing with. There's there's always motion to this stuff. Okay. So here. Now I'm moving this way, and I'm heading for here. Okay. But as I get here, don't move it so much. It's just like the silo where it's leveled out here. When it's Facing your eye, then it starts to change direction. Here it's more or less straight, but now it's changing direction. See how that changes that way? And it goes from underneath here, up and around. And it's going to head up there, like that. Okay? So it's darker over here. The light, let's say the light is over here. So this is going to be darker here. And that's going to be a little darker in there because it's facing away from the light source. And if this was an apple, be like that, then you can begin to do this trick. And then that comes out like this. I'm cross-hatching all kinds of different ways here. Okay. Now, this has something that it's on. And down here is going to be the, sh the shadow. Now, the shadow starts at the apple. It doesn't start way out here for some reason. Some people do that, but it doesn't really. Okay. And it'll be out this way. Usually the shadow will reflect the shape of the object. If you wanted to put another apple in here. Now see how this one is here. The other one's up higher. Okay. I'm going to put that in there right now. So is that the wrong thing to do? Well, let's find out.
Now this should be darker in here because this is shading this part. So the way I like to do work though is to have something that's real in front of me. Okay. But right now I'm just working from what probably sh should be happening. This is going to be darker here. It's like this is dark, so is this. And this apple there is being shaded by this guy. This should be a little bit lighter here. If the light is hitting here, it's bouncing here. That should make that lighter, this area. A little bit lighter. It should be darker over there. Okay. And it should be darker on this side. Now, I want that to be going up. So see what I've got to do? See what this is, the motion here? The motion here is up and over. I'm telling it what it's doing by how I move these lines. These lines matter. See how that matters? And I just pull on, on the pencil. I don't want it to get really dark. Now, is this right? Well, let's put a shadow in here. Does it look right yet? Now, you have the table line there. Continue it on there. It's not so bad. It has to be up higher. If it was right here, you wouldn't be able to overlap. Okay? So this has to be up a little bit higher. Then you have your shadow there, and you end up with an apple, you know. And you do some of this and some of that. Okay, if you want, you can go around with your pencil like that, likewise here. You have to go with the shape of whatever it is that you're drawing. Alrighty. Now, I'm going to apply that and that, put them together, okay? And let's do that over here. First of all, I'm going to do this. The silo bottom goes up. The top of the silo goes down. Like this. Okay. Now, usually a silo has a top on it. So I'm going to put a little dot. And then I'm going to go up to the dot from both ways. You can do it however you want. Okay. I'm moving my whole hand. I'm keeping the hand stiff, and I am moving from my shoulder, really, I guess. I don't think about it too much. I just do it. All right, so I keep doing that. Here's where it's light. It's like that up there. See, now I went and changed direction here. This little thing there, just be like that, and there is that. Now, silo lines, like so. Now, the barn, one of these things. Let's go up like so. Now we go up a little higher like that, like this. And back, over, over. That'll be there, this'll be like this here. Mine too big, maybe. This should go about like so. And this is going over here. And this is where the, the little, little door is going to be. And when you're going to roll the door back over to here. And this is going to come down like approximately like that. Okay. And that will be that. And here will be the ramp. Okay, I'm going to put that a little bit lower. You can always adjust. Now, it's not a very big barn. It's just like a little, little tiny thing, I guess. Okay. Now, usually, you will get a line like that and put your boards down here and put some more boards down here. And this here will be stones, big boulders that they've used to build the bottom. Likewise here, and this is the interior of the barn, probably with some divisions in here, like that. Okay, now, 
This in here is shaded by the silo, so we're going to make that a little darker. And we'll make it lighter as we get out to here. A little darker. And I'm going to make it a little darker on, underneath here. And a little lighter as we get over to here. I'm going to make that line in there again. This in here again. These boards don't have to be just perfect. Like so. Okay. The roof is probably going to be steel. And I'm going to give it a little of this. Okay. This part here. Be a little darker there, a little lighter as it goes back. Okay, this here is the door. So, and this is the ramp up. That ramp is going to have a little, and that'll come out that way. And what we need is one of these and one of these. Okay, and then you can put some of this stuff back in there. Of course, some of that back there. And likewise here. Okay. And, and a couple of these. And you've got yourself what you need here. Okay. It's as hard as that. Now, trees. We've got to work on doing a few trees. So, I'm going to do a couple of small ones here. Trees. The evergreen tree. No. See how I'm squibbling that back and forth here? I'm not doing the Christmas tree look things that some people like to do. This tree has got here a trunk. And the trunk, as you get farther down, gets a little bigger. Like that. Okay, and you can put a few branches in there, like so. Okay, and I'll put another one here next to it. That, and there I'm just going to look. Like so. Okay, the thing here now is what's in behind there. Well, if you've got kind of a bush or something, then you can just, you know, do this. And you can change direction. And like that. And if you want, you can do this. Try to avoid doing the straight branch thing, you know. A little bigger at the bottom, smaller as you go up. Put a few. You don't need millions of them. Okay. And I'm just going to do a little of this and structure things here. And you know, what the heck, it's not so bad. Now, one more thing, then I'm going to quit. Rocks, because in this picture here that we're looking at, we've got these guys, okay? These are the trees here, so that'll be more or less like that, okay? So, rocks. Okay, the rocks, the base of the rock... Okay, as you see here, the base of the rock. Get them to turn up a little. Okay, so here's going to be one rock, sort of. Okay, another one's going to be over here, let's say. Now, I'm just making this up. I'm not looking at anything. And I'm going to put another one over here, sort of. And maybe one back up in here. 
Okay. Okay, now, how do we do this? Well, I'm gonna just do this at the bottom. So now the direction that I'm going in, it matters, because it tells me what the rock's doing. You know, all this that I showed you up here? Well, now I'm applying it here. Doing little thingies like that. Like so. Now the trick here now is, I've got light here, I've got to have dark there. Okay, so this is going to be dark. All right, like that. But then it turns lightish, okay? So I pull on the pencil a little bit. And you can see the structure starting to take shape. I kind of see that there, so that's going to be like that. I'm going to dip a little gray on there and pull that. Just like that, okay? And then I'm going to put a little bit thicker dark under there because it's going to be a little bit lighter here. And that's going to be darker in here just to separate it. And that'll be a little bit darker in here. I'm going to change direction just to shape the rock, the stones, the boulders. And the direction matters so that I turn my pencil, okay? Because it gives you it gives you some some shape to these spaces. And here, this is kind of more of a flattish looking rock. Okay, and just to put these on some dirt, I'm just gonna put little shading things like that. I'm just going back and forth though. I'm not going up and down now. See, the direction matters. And if you wanted to, you know, and behind here. A rock, uh, be a tree possibly up behind here. Press pretty hard on that pencil. Okay. 